Roland, who is our camwork speci specialist, will be um, guiding us through the camworks three axis uh, kick ability, and also there will be some videos that we'll show later on. Um, and yeah, I'll just pass on to Roland, and let's take it away, Roland. Okay, thank you. Um, welcome everybody, and again, uh, sorry for for the delay. So we're gonna show a few uh, highlights of the Camox 3 axis milling. And uh, first thing and important, it's fully integrated in SolidWorks, so you don't leave the SolidWorks application. And uh, it's in the same environment. It supports the SolidWorks assembly mode as well for the fixture as for the parts you want to machine. We're going to see that later in a. Uh, also important, the CAMWORKS data, the machining data, are all in the same SolidWorks file. So if you have versions of uh, file, all you manage is one solidworks file, file and this is and important, this is important. If you have a dvm, you have a system, DVM system, system or something like that one file, one file and no extra, extra cam, cam files, files to manage um what we're gonna see in the three axis milling which is new is a uh, face selection or surface selection by colors which, so which makes it very easy uh, to, to have different, have different strategy or to apply different strategy to a complex, complex part. We're going to see this later in a video as well. Also, there's some new settings for the volume mill. Volume mill is a uh, routing technology, and there's a new wizard which allows you to select the material uh, of the stock uh, of the tool and it will automatically uh, set the feed and speed for that type of machining. Also, we're gonna see uh, how the TechDB technology database uh, in CAMOX works, how you can save um, machining strategy and uh, apply them to different parts or family of parts. Also, CAMOX has uh, G code based machining simulation, which is also integrated in CAMWORKS. So it's not a separate application, it's fully integrated in CAMWORKS as well. Uh, this is what we're going to see in a video later on um, cavity machining using the color selection and also how CAMWORKS can automatically calculate the tool length or protrusion, which is needed to uh, machine a specific cavity. And another video showing uh, how CAMWORKS can automatically uh, do tool pass clipping and mirroring. And also an option which allows actually to use five axis uh, tool pass definition and uh, apply them in three axis. We find our stock. Um, I'm stopping right here. Does anyone, does uh, the audio come through or not? Yes, it works. Yeah. Oh, okay, so I'm uh, continuing. Uh, right. Sorry for that. Okay. Okay, let's open our. Here we go. So, first step is to select the machine. I'm going to select Micron. Post processor is automatically selected. Heidenheim. Setup. Machine coordinate system. And let's say no indexing, just three axis machine. Our stock. By default, Camox is creating a so-called bounding box. You have the option to choose a sketch, a STL file, or even a SOLIDWORKS file to define the stock. Want some extra material? Just go here and add extra material in the requested or required direction. 
just confirm. Next step, Camox can automatically detect so-called two and a half axis feature, holes, cavities, bosses, etc. Well, let's just say this is okay and extract automatically those features. Now Camox is going through the analyzing the geometry, extracting the features, going to the TechDB uh, technology database to create operation with the correct strategies and generate toolpaths. Here we go. So all the two and a half axis feature have been found and we have a toolpath. Now what we're missing is actually the cavity which is a three axis machining geometry. So let's just go to our first setup and right click and I say insert new multi-surface feature have different options to select the faces, but I'm going to select face by color. Here I can see all the color used in that part, and let's say we want to machine the gray area, and we'll see level strategy. This shows what is currently defined in a database for this technology. Okay right click and generate operation plan Camox goes in the database, create the operation right click again and generate the tool task for the graphing operation now we see the entire part has been machined, we don't want that so I double click and edit the graphing parameter and under the advanced tab I can say ok don't go to stock go just the outer silhouette and stay on center. I say OK. Here we go, we have our roughing. Let's do the same thing for the finishing and just say outer silhouette and center. And let's go on preview first to check whether it's right. OK, but we don't want this type of machining. We want this to go down, let's say, in spiral. So instead of selecting just Z level, let's say helical. And since uh, we have different angles or slopes here, we're going to select variable and flat. And just say 1.5 as an example. Minimum cut amount, 5. And on a flat, more flat area, we select the maximum step over. And let's say, OK. General new toolpaths. So in the process manager here, you can see actually the progress and you could work on your part. You don't have to wait for the tool pass to be uh, finished. Here we go. So now it looks much better. We still have a slight problem. We don't want the tool to go down into that hole. So how can we fix this very easily? We go into SolidWorks and insert a fill surface. Just select the edge and contact let's say, tangent and say OK. Now you can see Camo stays or the tool part stays within that go. New and 
and we can call this uh, three axis cavity as an example apply the size for that uh, new strategy just the dimension to, to limit that strategy uh, and here we go so next time I would create this uh, all I would have to do is recall this from the database Let's just do it quickly I delete this when deleting the feature, of course, the operation is deleted as well. So let's go back here. I insert my feature like before. I select colors, gray one, and I select here a new strategy I just created. Let's say OK. Generate operation plan, generate toolpath. So you see, it's correct the first time. Let's do the same here. Generate toolpath. Takes a bit of time. Okay, here we go. You can see I just created this very quickly. Next step, of course, is uh, simulation. And verification. Green means we are on, on target. And the part is finished. I'm ready to generate the NC code uh, post process. Remember, it's a Heidenheim, so here I'll see actually the code that is generated. Okay, so we're going to move to the next uh, video, and uh, this is uh, quickly showing how Camworks is actually uh, computing the tool protrusion. You can see on the right hand side here uh, in a Camworks menu, there's a checkbox where you can ask Camworks to calculate the protrusion, which we're going to see in the next video. Let me show you a nice option from Camworks on the part we previously programmed. Just open the part again and go to the area clearance, say edit definition. Now the cavity is quite deep, so am I sure that the tool will fit? I can go to advanced tab and ask Camworks to calculate the tool protrusion. I say preview. And here I have the minimum tool protrusion required to machine that part without collision, which is 68 millimeter. Can go back here to tool, tool holder, and I see that my protrusion is 50 millimeter, which means this is not safe and I should change the tool. So Camworks does this automatically for you to make sure you select the right tool for that operation nice feature. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next one. This part has uh, actually two surface feature, half pipe shaped, and uh, we're going to show how we can program this in Camworks using um, the toolpass mirroring. Let's move to the next topic of our webinar. Just open a new document. Here we see a part with some symmetric 
feature. So like before, just select the machine, same stock manager by default. And let's just insert manually our new feature. This time we don't select colors, we just go for all displayed. And we select the strategy. In this case, I just defined the one which is called three axis flow line. This shows the content of the tech DB. I say OK. Right click and generate operation plan. Now, here I have now my area clearance. Just generate tool pass. So generate a tool pass for the two features. And now let's go into the finishing options. And uh, I need to have a tool pass along that shape. So I just select flow lines between curve. And I select first curve. Okay, just notice which is here, then second curve, starting point is all in the same location, I say OK, and I go preview. It's already done, and you can see toolpath is nicely following the shape of that surface. Now, of course, I could do the same on the other side, but there's a nice option here, which lets me mirror the toolpath. So let's do that and keep the original. Now it wants to know about what axis. If I select, let's say, the edge here, and I go preview, it will use the edge as a symmetry axis, but that's not what we want in our case. So let's change this, now entity, and best here I can select, let's say, this plane and CAMWORKS will make the symmetry along that plane. Here we go. So once I'm done, I just say OK to confirm. Now you can see we have some entries and uh, retract here under that tab. We can define an entry radius. We have the ramping, which is spiral, which you can see here. Now, in that case, there is no danger to gouge the part. If we look at it, it looks, it looks safe. There would be a problem. We could go and use what we call tool path clipping, what would this do? Let's go to the online help, tool path clipping, and you can see here uh, all the options are actually well illustrated in the online help. Let's say we would have a vertical lead-in radio that might couch the part. Then by automatic clipping, CAMWORKS would just move the tool path or clip the tool path to avoid any collision and this is done automatically again. Okay, so we already do that part where we're going to see two different strategies, one pure three axis and the other one using the uh, optional uh, multi-axis tool pass. So let's go to the video.
next on this part we're going to show two different type of three axis toolpath. Let's start with the first we insert new multi surface feature, select all the faces and select my strategy, in that case dual strategy. We going to use pattern project to machine the top of the radius and then on the bottom of the part we're going to use the Z level. Just check OK, right click, generate operation plan, generate tool pass for the area clearance. Before we do the tool pass for the patent project, we need to constrain the tool path between flow lines. So we need to select the curve, select the top curve, and I select bottom curve, and K, and generate tool pass. So we've machined the top of the radius. Now for the Z level, since the top is already machined, we can say start at 30 degree, for example, uh, to maximum slope 90 degrees. We're going to use helical. Set K. Generate tool path. So we have the top and the bottom on Z level. Let's simulate this quickly. Now there's another way to, to do this and just uh, delete this feature and then do a new one new multi-surface feature, but this time I uh, select only the faces that need to be machined. So the faces in blue and I select the three axis multi-axis machining. Just one operation Operation plan. Now, before we start, the same. I need to constrain the tool path between flow lines. So I select the upper curve and I select the lower curve. And as you can see here, under axis control, this is a three axis tool path. And if you have the five axis option, of course, you can use four or five axis machining. We're going to restrict this to three axis. Generate tool path. Okay, so we have just one operation here and one tool path for that type of feature. So this is the optional uh, multi-axis possibility to use actually five axis strategy but trend the axis to three. Okay, so we're going to move to the next uh, video showing a different type of uh, machining which is a constant step over and also B tangency milling. Two more three axis options on this part. I just go and click feature recognition. There's not much here. Just 
that one that is recognized. So we're going to right click and add multi surface feature and select all displayed. Strategy will be in this case constant step over as an area clearance and a constant step over finishing. Right click, generate operation plan, area clearance. We have pocket out, but we can select volume mill. Now, what is new, you can see if you select volume mill, it comes up with a new uh, feed and speed wizard where you can select the material the hardness of the material, coating of the tool, part holding, the cone, taper, and mill, etc. Different parameter and here at the bottom you can select if you want to go minimum or to the maximum of the possible uh, feed and speed parameter. Say OK. Then Maximum cut amount, as you can see, is set automatically. Flute length is 25 millimeters, and uh, cut amount is 24. Steps are two and a half. And uh, what is new is hit flat to make sure that flat area are machined properly. Say OK, and generate tool path. So this takes a bit of time. Tool part processing in volume takes a bit time. A yeah. bit more time, of course, but it's worth the wait since machining will be much faster than with a traditional roughing strategy. Okay, so this is how it looks like. a quick simulation so you can actually see oops go back this was turbo mode and go back to the tool mode and you can see how volume mill is actually and machining its way up So now let's move to the finishing. Just generate tool paths without any specific settings. change a few things here uh, constant step over let's say we go uh, zig and just preview so this looks quite okay and you can see that the tool pass is full of the stock but that doesn't really look very pretty so how can we change this let's just go uh, okay and uh, we gonna add a contain area 
to actually change the shape of the tool pass. Just let's finish this and go here and add a new contain area. So what I can do is just click all the things. And I can add an offset the outside, maybe 15 millimeter. So the machining will be restrained within that yellow area. Topaz is computed. And you can see now we have a much nicer toolpath that matches actually the topology of the part. Now of course here at the bottom we have a sharp angle and uh, so there will be material left. What can we do there? We can add a new operation, a uh, pencil mill. So the pencil mill we select the whole feature and we say OK. We want a smaller tool. There is nothing available right here, so I can go uh, see a uh, ball nose two millimeter actually. Now we do it on the pattern. I can select trace or parallel lace and say, okay, I want uh, five cuts at 0 0.2 millimeters okay oops and generate tool pass now we can see that we also have machining in that area which we may not want so how can we fix this a different way but uh, one simple way is to modify the uh, angle so I'll put 30 degree and here we go we just have the machining around the part and the other tool pass is gone so very simple to do Okay, let's move to the next one. So now we're coming to the examples that come from customers. And uh, this one is um, showing actually how we can machine. Um, this is a drill housing. Oops. Sorry. And uh, we can do this automatically again using the tech TV. Now let's have a look at a real life example from a customer how quickly we can machine this part, which is as you can see in the assembly with all the fixture. So, what we have here is just a multi surface feature with everything selected. And if I look at the parameter, the strategy selected is drill housing made specially for this. If you have a part family, you always can use, let's say, the same strategy. Okay. Right click, generate operation plan. What I'm getting are three operations, starting with the area clearance. Let's just quickly generate the tool path.
this is using volume mail as you can see okay let's go to the next step flat area come works just automatically finds all the flat area inner parts and machine those without having to um, specifically select all those flat areas step over we don't want to machine the entire part so let's just insert uh, to new avoid area I want to avoid this area and tool will be allowed to go tool center on this curve let's do a second one new avoid area I want to avoid this area and let the tool go on the center okay so next generate tool pass I zoom in as you can see we have absolute neat and clean tool pass to machine that part and so this is done in minutes thanks to the tech DB where you can save actually the strategy that are parametric and will work for uh, parts with the same topology just different sizes so it will adapt automatically if I go in a setup I can set the origin of course but I can also define the fixture to tell the system not to machine this and then if I go into simulation I can see actually the part and the fixture There's also automatic uh, collision detection in the assembly mode where you have uh, the fixture. So you can actually define safe tool pass and safe machining without any uh, collision problem with the fixtures. Flat area now, of course, we have the finishing I will take too long so I stop uh, I stop here I can go back use turbo mode and just check now everything is green as you can see there's a little blue here obviously the tool used there was uh, too big we have a 10 millimeter tool so I would need to use a smaller tool to get rid of that blue area and we can see here I have a 10 millimeter let's just go in there and add uh, tool diameter uh, let's say I have a six millimeter change the tool select okay and generate tool path again Okay, 
So let's check again. Simulate. We use Turbo. And this time we're good. Everything is green. Uh, okay, so we're going to move to the next one. Actually, all the tool pass calculation are real time. So what you see here in a demo is really actually the time it takes in real life to program such a part. So this is uh, another example from a customer. It looks very simple, but actually, uh, if you just use three axis strategy, you have a hard time to get a clean tool pass when you're moving from the horizontal to the vertical shape. So we're going to see this in a demo using the uh, uh, optional tool pass, how we can get a clean tool pass on those simple shapes. This is an example of a simple part from a customer. However, if you want to machine the faces marked in color here and there, using the normal three axis strategy may not be the satisfactory results and may be um, a bad finishing. In this example, using what we saw before, the optional multi-axis uh, machining, we have three axis tool pass and the pattern just as you can see parallel slices and the quality of the tool path is high and it just machines the surface that you want. Same here, it's very quickly done, select the three faces using the color and then apply the strategy which again is just uh, multi-axis pattern is slice parallel and axis control three axis so very very especially useful on this type of surface when you machine from horizontal to vertical and you want a, a smooth uh, a smooth transition as you can see here horizontally and vertically the tool paths are of high high quality so this is a real life example if we do the simulation this is machined out of a block of aluminum and this is a result Okay, so we getting to, to the end of the presentation. Uh, now, as you could see, actually the three axis smelling is quite intuitive and easy to use. And there are different strategy to really uh, accommodate all type of machining and to get not just a tool pass, but a high quality tool pass and also get a high quality finish. Uh, this is this is important again uh, to be fast and still have a high quality surface finish. Best practice strategy, as you could see, can be saved in a tech DB, and these strategy are parametric, so they will work for different shapes as long as uh, let's say the topology remains uh, similar. But uh, it uh, works well for family of part or again parts with similar uh, topology. Safe strategy again are parametric and uh, are not just library elements but are really uh, get adapted to different size and uh, different geometry. Picture collision detection in assembly mode so you sure that uh, you're not machining the picture or breaking the tool or have any uh, problem with collisions. I uh, didn't show it here, but we have an optional G-code based uh, machine simulation where you see actually all the machine, the surrounding, 
and the simulation is actually based on the G code. Okay, so this concludes actually that quick overview of let's say some uh, highlights of the CAMOX uh, three axis milling and uh, you welcome to ask your question and you can send uh, an email and we will answer by email or if you have some question right now which I can answer I will be glad to do so.